All right, there's a nice little routine there. Pre-run activation drills, mobility. You know, the older I get, the more I have to do these things before I head out and run, or at least it feels better to do it. Uh, it is a big uh, time commitment, of course, but you know, trying to stay healthy, running these high mileage weeks. Let's go run. Woo! Wah! All right, November 12th, 2023. Did a nice flat run on the gravel roads pass. Slide Colorado here. Beautiful mountain views, not too windy today. Still warm out. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to update you guys on my Honolulu Marathon training. We are about four weeks out from the race. It's probably gonna be a little hot and humid, at least coming from dry Colorado in the winter. And you know, it's not a perfectly flat course, but we're not going out there to time trial. We're going out there to have some fun. And uh, yeah, Hawaii is great. To vacation too. <laughs> Done the Xterra Trail Half Marathon Championships a couple times over the years there in uh, the island of Oahu, but we'll be running along Waikiki Beach and uh, yeah, trying to get ready for that. Of course, you know, it's my first marathon back in a really long time, road marathon, uh, especially since my pulmonary embolism uh, a little over two years ago, and then coming off a mountain hundred like TDS in the snow. <laughs> even though it was in the summer, mountain training, a little extreme. Uh, so it'll be interesting, but you know, trying to get in some more flat running and some more speed work, and I'll run down my some of my 90 mile training weeks that I've put in uh, over the last month, just so you get a sample of why I do some of these workouts. And part of it, you know, part of it is I wrote my schedule, I didn't have much time after taking a break after TDS, but I wanted to get up over, 100 miles a week, 110 miles a week. I've only been getting up to 90. Right now I'm finishing up a 90 mile week, but you know, for me at this stage in my career, you know, I ran 120 miles a week to run 216 a long time ago. I have a big base. <laughs> I have a big base. I'm coming off ultra marathons. It's more the speed and efficiency and the musculature and the intensity, especially with my breathing and heart rate that I need to get used to. And then, the other factor is being at altitude. I'm a lot higher than Boulder up here. We're at a uh, living close to 7,500 feet. Put that in meters there. So, you know, you never adjust the altitude. It's a good, for me, I think 20 seconds a mile slower, 15 seconds a kilometer slower than probably what I could do at sea level. It's also terribly windy out here a lot of days. Today is actually surprisingly still. This view. So what I've been doing, and we'll go back inside so I can give you the rundown of some Strava shots, is a lot of fart licks on the bike path, which is not flat, but you know, one minute, two minute, three minute surges, timed intervals really, where I could run at a faster pace. I've been going to the track once a week, usually on Sundays uh, when the kids aren't in school, and doing shorter intervals. And then this week, some lighter threshold LT1 to LT2 stuff, 5 by 2 k yesterday, which is a solid workout, but it's not terribly fast, but you know, for most people, we would build up their stamina with longer up-tempo runs, long runs, long runs are key, uh, always, and I do those pretty fast uh, relative to the altitude too. Actually more on the long runs we have planned, some quality long run coming up in the next episode, the next vlog, because uh, I don't lollygag on my long runs, but yeah, it's more about quality over quantity and doing all the little things, especially as I get older, you know, with running form, strength, mobility, trying to correct some of those imbalances, stay healthy, especially after my, you know, pulmonary embolism and all that, uh, eat healthy, but doing all the little things, getting the metrics checked, athlete blood test plug coming up, uh, but let's get out of there. Let's do an easy run here. Woo! All right, so the time in between runs. I've been doing these nightly runs uh, out in the garage on the treadmill setup. 
Uh, really nice because it gets dark. The sun's setting at like 4.30 at this time of the year in this uh, latitude here in Colorado, the mountains to the west. And uh, it's real convenient to be able to jump on the treadmill, maybe do some heat training if I'm wearing extra layers. That being said, it's cold in the garage. But, you know, get the treadmill going, get in an evening shakeout, usually just do like five miles 8k uh, as a second run but keep the metabolism up and doubling allows me to put in uh, some pretty good volume when i'm putting in higher intensity workouts maybe on the track in the morning or in the afternoon uh, i could still do a shakeout evening run even when it's dark and stormy and icy and, and it's starting to snow now uh, outside so the treadmill is a nice soft surface nice uniform surface uh, very good for monitoring things like cadence and heart rate uh, not worrying about having to bundle up for the freezing cold. It's also safe for, uh, you know, not running in the dark. But, uh, you know, I digress there. I've been doing these extra exercises as well, just trying to stay fit and overall strong. And I do want to plug, this is a sponsor plug, Athlete Blood Tests. Uh, part of that going into a training cycle for a big key race like Honolulu Marathon is to make sure I'm firing on all cylinders in terms of my uh, blood levels. And if, you know, this Athlete Blood Test, it is a sponsor uh, for Sandy and I. You can check them out. The link's in the description below. U.S. only. Uh, I know a lot of you are international, so sorry. But uh, yeah, U.S. Uh, only, athletebloodtest.com. You could get, I get the gold panel uh, usually several, uh, well, a month or two in advance. So I could correct things in case something like my vitamin D is off. And that's a real big one. I get low. A lot, I think most Americans are probably low. If I wasn't an athlete, I probably wouldn't know. Uh, but you, you know, you're depleting your body. You're pushing really hard. Vitamin D levels could go down, especially in the winter, because it's related to being outside in, in the sun, not covering up too much. Of course, I put sunscreen on because it's harmful UV rays, <laughs> harsh UV rays out here in Colorado. But vitamin D, I do supplement with it, but you have to be careful with that, and everything's under a medical professional. An athlete blood test uh, gives you that quantitative data, and it gives you a range, not just a range for like a normal person, right? A normal doctor might say, oh, you're, you're healthy, you're in the normal range for a normal person. Well, Athlete blood test has their own range for athletes because we're pushing our body. I'm running up to 90 miles a week here, running marathons and ultra marathons. I want to be in tip top shape and make sure that things like my vitamin D, uh, my iron, my vitamin B12, uh, magnesium, uh, sodium, electrolytes, all that is up to snuff. I could also see some changes in my red blood cell count with altitude training and stuff like that. Uh, testosterone levels is a huge one, especially as I get older, uh, making sure that that's staying in an optimal range. And they make recommendations uh, based on maybe your diet, but also your training schedule uh, and give you some ideas. These are science, or science people, medical professionals giving you this advice and this comprehensive analysis. So it's not just getting the blood test numbers back, but also this interpretation of them and some suggestions. So really helps uh, Sandy and I optimize our training and racing. So check that out. Athlete Blood Test. Give them a follow on social media. This is a business plug or a sponsor plug. Uh, for them, but really appreciate their support now. All right, now that we got that out of the way, uh, there is a key workout that I did, uh, five by 2K on the track. I did want to talk about it because it's kind of a, a, a good example of uh, some of the thresholds training. And I, you know, I did a talk on zone three training uh, previously. We're looking at going between basically the aerobic threshold, LT1, to the true lactate threshold, anaerobic threshold, LT2. So, you know, in this workout, I have a progressive cut down where I'm starting, you know, I'm running barely under 720 uh, for a, a two kilometer rep, given I am at altitude here uh, over well over 2000 meters, but and it was kind of windy too. Excuses though. Uh, short rest, short rest on these because they're thresholds. So only a three minute rest. First one, you know, you see it getting cut down from like 719, 716, 710. Then I'm down to, you know, seven flat. Uh, last one, I'm able to accelerate quite a bit into the 640s. So I'm running, you know, 320 per kilometer pace, 520 per mile pace about. Uh, at altitude up here in the wind at the end of the workout, uh, not too shabby, but I did kick it in the last 400 meters at, at sub five minute mile pace, uh, three minute kilometer pace. And as you can see there, the heart rate data, you could see as we're in my Coros uh, arm strap, the heart rate data got up to 179. And there's been an interesting thing in this segment where I've been able to spike some heart rate values much higher than uh, what I thought previously or what I could do <clears throat> previously. So uh, I think that bodes well uh, for the pulmonary embolism recovery, but also just my breathing in general. Uh, I'm not going to say it's, it's like it was before, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm putting in the effort, putting in the work, and definitely feeling the lactate on that last one. 
but this is good time on feet. This is good moderate to high intensity threshold where uh, we're getting the legs nice and tired. We're pushing the aerobic system, and then we're supporting this with uh, you know pretty high mileage, consistent high mileage. You can see on the Strava graph there, you know 80, 85 miles a week, 90 miles a week. Uh, not horrible volume. I wish I could get a little higher, but you know it, you're balancing it with the energy you're spending doing faster speed workouts, and then also trying to stay healthy. So that's really the key there. And again, you know the next big key workout is a hard hard long run not to the well but like definitely pace changes where we're hitting some thresholds during the course of a long run that's much longer than 20 miles or 32k and we're pounding the pavement pretty hard so uh, definitely stay tuned for that to finish off this vlog uh, of course we got honolulu coming up and stay tuned let me know how your training's going let me know if you're going to be in honolulu as well really looking forward to meeting a lot of people and running another road marathon it's been five years plus uh, before my pulmonary embolism and when I was in my early 30s versus my late 30s now since I last towed the starting line of a road marathon. But you know me, any service, any distance. Sandy and I sell training plans at higherrunning.com, at Higher Running. Follow us on social media, check out the training plans. We've done it all, so we have plans for uh, pretty much 5K to ultra marathon, 100 miles, you name it, anything in between. Thanks so much for all your support. Thanks to Tile Sponsor Hoka, keeping the dream alive, as well as uh, well, a lot of sponsors, but uh, definitely appreciate Hoka's support and all the Patreon supporters for supporting this YouTube channel the most. It means the world to me. So thank you. Hope you're doing well. Subscribe and like these if you like them. And stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.